you said ask for what you want in great detail. Right. Now, great detail, I, I, it would include time. But you also said some of these, because yes, most people, this is going to be my year and you know, I'm going to make a million bucks by the end of the year, or I'm going to have X, Y, and Z by the end of the year. And then that doesn't happen. And people tend to, oh, this doesn't work. What is some of the practices or some of the things that we can do if in fact, I I followed all the steps, I wrote out my, my goals in great detail, and I wanted it to happen by December 31st, 2021 or 2020. Right. And it didn't come to pass. Oh, forget that. It doesn't work. I'm going to go back and finish living life the way I know it to be. Mm-hmm. Are there, you know, any practices we can put into place to keep our mind focused? Absolutely. Absolutely. But let's let's start about detail because you started with that as a, yeah. as a premise. So you mentioned a Bentley. Mm-hmm. You ever been in one? Yes. Okay. So you can describe what that experience is like. So if you were going to visualize being in a Bentley, you know that the bat, you know, depending on the model of the Bentley it was, like how the leather seats were, what it smelled like, uh, you know, what kind of functions it had. The one I was in recently had TV sets behind both of the seats. Everything was green leather. It was really beautiful. So if, I know that. So first of all, get yourself into that lifestyle somehow. Go test drive that car. Go to the Ritz Carlton and have a drink in the lobby so you know what it's like in the Ritz Carlton. You know, if you wanted to belong to a spa, you know, you can't afford to be a total member, at least go get a massage there, see what it's like inside. You know, you want to go on a, you know, airplane, you know, save up and go first class at least once. Don't know what it feels like. So you can talk about it. So you can describe it. So you can feel it, whatever that might be. And then what you want to do is you want to practice this is what's in my book. I call it the combination lock. You have to know the combination to a lock to get the lock open. If I know four of the five numbers, I'm missing one, I can't get that lock open. If I have them in the wrong order, I can't get that lock open, no matter how hard I work. And some people work really, really hard doing a lot of the right things, but they're not doing all the right things in the right order. And that's why they don't get there. And the other thing that stops most people, and then we can go back and talk about what those numbers in the lock are. But one of the big things for most people is they've never really addressed their limiting, unconscious, unconscious limiting beliefs. Everybody has unconscious limiting beliefs. Sometime between the age of three and eight, usually they got formed. And they were formed very powerfully. And most of those are unconscious. You don't know you have them. Imagine you're getting on a plane and you go to the airport and you, you're, you're getting on the plane. You see the pilot come on and go into the, the front of the plane. They close that door. But the pilot's six years old. He's got the three stripes on the thing. But he's about, you know, three feet tall and he's six years old. How would you feel? Very uncomfortable. Like, get me the hell out of here. Exactly. And yet most of us have a three to eight year old piloting most of our life. We have these limiting beliefs that are controlling the parameters of what we think we can do. We don't even know it, but we're afraid of rejection or we're afraid to do this, or we just procrastinate and we don't know why. And it's usually those limiting beliefs that are doing it. I'll just give you one example of someone from a workshop of mine. There's a guy named Scott Schilling. He's a salesperson down in Texas. And he could never make more than a certain amount of money. And he was a natural salesperson. But he took my seminar and we did some limiting beliefs work and he got in touch with the belief that was formed for him actually when he was about 20 years old. So I do this thing where people go back in time and normally people go back to younger, but he went back to 20. And he had just got his first check working for an insurance company that his dad had worked for for a number of years. And his check was bigger than his dad's. He didn't know that. He gets his check. He's really proud. He wants to show his dad. So his dad will be proud of him. He shows him the check. Says, dad, look at my first check. And his dad went, and walked away. He said, wow, I really made my dad feel bad. I don't like making my dad feel bad. He's the person I love more than anybody. Later, he learns from his mother that night that his check was bigger than his dad. And he made a decision in his 20s never to make more money than his dad made. He didn't want to hurt his dad's feelings. Now he's in his 40s. He's still doing that. Once he realized that, and we changed that, we got rid of that belief, created a new belief, he was, he made, what he said, one-fifth of his year's salary in the next two days after the seminar. All of a sudden, something got unleashed. He five times his income in the next year because that belief got removed. 
So we have a lot of beliefs. There are, there are powerful tools that I do. And anyone watching this, if you just go to jackcanfield.com and just, you know, give us your, your email address, what will happen is about four times a year, I do a free call, often to two or 3,000 people, where I take people through that belief change process. It's just free. I do it online, Zoom call, and people from all over the world. So if you're interested in that, I can offer you that for free. But what happens is that's the big thing. And then the other thing is fear. People have fear, and fear stops them, fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of loss of my investment, fear of what people will think, losing face, you know, on it goes. So those are the two biggies that you have to learn how to deal with. And um, once you begin to identify and release these beliefs, and what you'll find is there's probably like 20 or 30 of them in there. Uh, but what happens is that they come off one at a time. Like I just got involved in a network marketing company that sells essential oils somewhere around November of last year. And my big fear was that people go, oh my God, Jack Canfield, he's this big motivational speaker. He's respected. He's 76 years old. What the hell is he doing getting involved in, in a network marketing company? And I had to look at that. And, and the fear came up about my father and my father rejecting me when I, when I wanted to go and get a job and do something I wanted to do. And he didn't want me to do it because it would make us look like we needed the money and he didn't want to look poor. It was really interesting. Um, but once I re released that, then I went off and, you know, I'm making an additional 10,000 a month right now, doing really very, very little. And I've enrolled everyone in my company because what happened for us, Sean, was we hit this recession that came about, you know, with the pandemic. And I wanted my staff, I didn't want it to fire anybody. So I said, if we're all involved in this network marketing and everyone's in the company in the same organization, if we had to reduce salaries, we wouldn't have to fire anybody because everyone's making several thousand a month more now anyway. And that's been working really, really well. But I had to overcome that fear and that belief in order to do that. Um, so that's the kind of thing that even at my age, stuff still comes up. And what happens, anytime someone sets a big goal, whether it's the Bentley, whether it's 100,000 a year, whether it's to you know end racism in America, whatever it might be, you are setting a huge goal. And when you do that, three things always come up. Number one, we call them considerations. Those are all the thoughts. Oh, I'd have to borrow money from my dad. I hate to ask my dad for money. I'm going to lose clients because if I vote, if I say I'm going to vote for that person, I'm going to lose all my conservative or all my liberal clients. They're all going to go away. I'm going to be screwed. So I'm not going to take a position. You know, all these thoughts start to come up. The second thing that comes up are fears, fear of rejection, fear of loss, fear of, you know, looking foolish, whatever. And the third thing that comes up is real, what we call roadblocks. There are real things in the world that are roadblocks. There are roadblocks to voting. There are roadblocks if you want to open a marijuana dispensary. If you're not in a state that where that's legal, you're called a criminal. <laughs> so, so that's a roadblock. You know, so you got to change the laws first. So you know, you want to go to Hawaii. Your wife wants to go to Colorado and ski. Those are it's a roadblock. You got to handle that if you want to have a vacation. So those are those are normal things. But when those show up for most people, they go, oh. That's too uncomfortable. I don't want to deal with it. I'll go back to my old life. I'll just watch, you know, Breaking Bad reruns for the third time or This Is Us or whatever I'm addicted to. But the point is, we're not doing the thing we need to do. But if we know that those show up, that's natural. Have you ever been to the, like an arcade where they have the game called Whack-A-Mole? Yes. Where they, you, yes. you know, and you hit the hammer with the, the, the moles coming up. Yep. Well, life is a, is a Whack-A-Mole game in a sense. When you set a goal, the mole starts showing up. And we got to whack them, but we can't whack them if they don't show up. The way we get them to show up out of our unconscious is to set a big goal, something that will stretch us, something that will make us out of our comfort zone. And then when we handle it, we learn how to handle the discomfort. We learn how to be out of our comfort zone. We learn how to partner with people. We learn how to visualize, set goals, you know, deal with 100% responsibility, stop complaining, stop blaming, et cetera. Those are the things that will get us to where we want to go. But we can't deal with those. If we just sit around in a state of laziness, lassitude, not, not pushing ourselves. Does that make sense? What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.